this video, I just kind of wanted to draw a side-by-side -side comparison uh, for fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation. And I, I alluded to this and talked about this briefly in other videos. And I kind of want to just have both of them side-by-side -side that you can see them. So in fatty acid synthesis, we just talked about that in the previous video. So I'm not going to go through and talk about this you know, in detail again. And I'm not going to go through and talk about beta oxidation in detail again. I kind of want to just highlight the differences. So um, uh, notice, just in, for instance, like um, the result of fatty acid synthesis is we have a, an acyl ACP, whereas in beta oxidation we start with an acyl CoA. So the difference really in terms of the structures is just right here, right? It's still a thioester linkage, just to a different thing, right? Um, and of course, we've already mentioned the differences that that are associated in terms of, um, you know, the oxidation reduction reactions, um, you know, the reductions in, in fatty acid synthesis and the oxidations in um, in, ox in beta oxidation, um, the dehydration in fatty acid synthesis versus the hydration in in beta oxidation, um, and the condensation reaction versus the cleavage um, in fatty acid synthesis, the oxidation and the um, beta uh, oxidation has the cleavage. So here, um, one of the one of the key things to pay attention to is that that difference there. And here we have a three carbon molecule joining a two carbon molecule, and then this one carbon out here leaves. Right? That's something that doesn't doesn't happen at all in beta oxidation. And I think the reason this happens is that it allows the free energy of this reaction to be more favorable. So if you're wondering why, I think that's part of the reason for it. Um, so also pay attention to the um, so instead of having or excuse me instead of having uh, two acetyl CoA's here we've got an acetyl CoA or excuse me an acetyl ACP and a malonyl ACP versus over here we had two acetyl CoA's here we had a condensing enzyme versus a thiolase to cleave the thiol thiol linkage however there is a thioesterase that's probably similar to this thiolase in that it cuts the thioester linkage. Um, but in terms of the molecules themselves, they're pretty much identical. If you look at the this here, this is a beta keto a beta keto acyl CoA. This is a beta keto acyl ACP. That's the only difference between these two, right? The molecules um, are pretty much all the same. Right here, this is a um, a beta hydroxy um, a beta hydroxy acyl ACP, right? So this one's just a CoA. This one's a beta hydroxy acyl CoA. One of the differences here, though, is that this one has um, the beta carbon is a D, has D stereochemistry, and this one has L, so they are opposite at that chiral carbon. So that's one thing that's different about those guys. Um, and uh, another thing is that the reduction reactions require reductases, whereas the oxidation reactions in beta, beta oxidation have dehydrogenases. So that's another difference. Um, we already mentioned the dehydrotase versus the hydrotase. Um, uh, this enoyl, enoyl ACP, again, enoyl ACP versus enoyl CoA. That's really the only difference. So the molecules are very, very similar. Um, I just, I mean, I really don't know uh, what else to mention other than that. Oh, actually, excuse me, one more thing is that um, both, rea both reduction reactions in fatty acid synthesis required an NADPH, right? Whereas um, in beta oxidation, the two different oxidation steps, one required an FAD and one required an NAD+. So that's also something to, to note, I guess. Um, I really don't know where I'm going with this video. I kind of just wanted to have a side-by-side -side comparison just so you guys can visualize it and you know maybe find that helpful. Anyways, I really hope you did find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.